Thanks for tuning in to the Charles Novell School of Music podcast, The Best Day Yet. Here you'll find tips, insight, and information to help your music and your ministry succeed. Whether you're a singer, a musician, or a songwriter, we want to help you where you are, but we also want to help you get to where you want to go. We believe that our talents are God's gift to us, but what we do with those are our gift back to God. Yesterday's information is important, but what we can learn today will make this the best day yet. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Charles Novell School of Music podcast, The Best Day Yet. Hey, my name is Rob Novell. I am your host on this journey and I'm so excited that you're here. Hey, we recently released a part one of a two-part podcast episode series on piano arranging with my dad, uh, Charles Novell. Uh, Some knew him as Charles Novell, some knew him as Dr. Charles Novell. I called him Dr. Dad. Uh, that's a joke. He was dad. Uh, but hey, we're going to get back into this and finish this up. Uh, today's episode is dealing with um, working through verses and choruses, arranging ideas, um, the interlude, the section there in the middle, a lot of times between the first chorus and the second verse, and then rolling on into the second verse and chorus and some different ideas that you could do to change things up and make things a little bit different the second time around. And then we're going to end this thing with some ending ideas. And I, I, I'm going to be completely honest and transparent with you. Uh, listening to this, preparing this podcast, my dad's level of creativity uh, came back to focus as to just how remarkable that it was. There's a section here towards the end when he's talking endings and he talks about a teacher and that teacher's influence on his music and his playing uh, just spontaneously how he begins to demonstrate and show some things. This is from a um, piano arranging class that my dad did in the early 90s. You may hear some people in the background because there were other pianists there in the room, the students that he was teaching. He's talking to them and just off the cuff plays these ideas and gives them examples and executes them so cleanly. So I want to get out of the way. Let's get right on into part two of this CNS podcast with uh, my dad, Charles Novell, on arranging for piano solos. Now, uh, what happens in the first verse? I would say the first verse you should play in a style that is uh, basically you the way that you most comfortable, comfortably feel when playing uh, at your level of proficiency right now. Play the first verse and chorus in that style. And um, uh, let's use uh, just a little talk with Jesus. <laughs> Because you want another musical idea for the interlude. Another idea for the interlude. Now, where do you get the idea from? Well, the interlude is actually an introduction for the second verse. So, take an intro idea and use it in the, uh, in the interlude spot. Basically, that's what we've got. We just we're just introducing the second verse. Now you can do one of two things: you can play the same uh, in- introduction idea as an interlude, or you can go to something that completely uh, different. I prefer something different so as to keep uh, things rolling along. 
But there are times that I will play the same thing in, in, in the interlude that I played in the introduction. And uh, nothing wrong with uh, going either direction. It's just how, how you feel uh, and how satisfied you are with the arrangement with what you're doing. If you're happy with the intro and it feels good to play it in the second, before the second verse, then, then go ahead and do that. Uh, use, uh, you know, if you're, if you're, if you kick it off like this. changed keys, you see, uh, as a, and it was a happy, bright sound, and I changed keys very easy. I went from uh, G, uh, playing G notes, to up to A flat notes, and that took me from the key of C up to D flat, using the same intro idea, but then playing it in the, the next key up. Um, you can also come out of something fast like that. Uh, did there was I just played chromatic chords, chromatic chords, and I played them, you can play them in one hand or you can play them in two hands, I played them in two, just chromatic chords, just coming straight down in chromatic chord position, uh, either one hand or two hands. Uh, and what you do is you play the two top notes in the right hand and the bottom note of the, of the chord in the left hand. Let's just take the key of C and uh, I'm opening it up and it makes it a little easier to play it in the first inversion and the thumb is going to play G and the uh, third finger is going to play C and the second finger of the left hand is going to play E and we're just going to come down like so. easier to play than the interval of the third. It spread just a little bit, and that little extra space helps me in playing it rather than playing in the third. See, I could come down like that. Yeah, and one on the left, see. So, you might feel more comfortable with it being closer together, and there's certain, there's nothing wrong with that. Pull it, pull it together and, and play it like that. Uh, don't you think, uh, this happened to me, and still happens to me, I hear something and I say, oh, that is so beautiful, and then the second thought, right right on its, uh, right, uh, right as it goes out, the other thought is, boy, that's difficult. And really, when you stop to think about it, and you, and you actually, when you learn to play it, it is a very simple thing, but it sounds complicated. And the ear says to us, that's difficult, that's complicated, and when the fingers start to plan, and now the mind comes into play, we try to, to uh, make it very complicated. Instead of being able to play with two hands, we have to have three hands or four hands to play this stuff. You know, and it's you can't true. do that. No, it's not true. It's not true. It's very, very, very simple, very easy. Now, let me give you a for, for instance. When I was growing up, Roger Williams had a big hit, uh, Autumn Leaves, and you know, like this. <laughs> scale in thirds, major thirds. Well, I worked and I worked and I worked and I worked and trying to get that thing and you know, my proficiency just was not up to being able to do that. And then uh, one time a friend out on the west coast, I was in, in California in uh, Long Beach and uh, a friend of mine out there, a very gifted pianist, 
uh, we had a little jam session and he played this thing and I said, wait a minute, how'd you play that? How'd you play that? Because I, wa I was watching his hands and it was, he was playing it differently than what I was playing the, the thirds. And it sounds the same, uh, but it's, it's a thousand times easier. He goes like this. Let me show you. Now what I'm doing is this. Um, I'm playing the uh, fingers four, two, one. And here are the notes. Four, two, one. I'm playing C, G sharp, G, B, F sharp, F, A, F, E, G, E flat, D, F, D flat, C, E, C, B, D, B flat, A, and then it starts all over again. See, once you learn the pattern that far, then it starts all over. It goes. And believe me, that's a lot easier than trying to play this double chromatic scale. technique every single day. If you're going to play it on Sunday, you better be working on it on Monday and on Tuesday and Wednesday because morning, it's and night. <laughs> morning, evening, and night. All right, now, let's look at the second verse. Second verse. Make the second verse different than the first verse. Um, several things that we could do. One of the things that we could do would be to play in the upper register, like... Uh, to work your way down and play yeah. out and work your way down so that you don't have have a big jump right going that fast you you can't get down there quick enough so what you do is you prepare by working your way down the register of the piano you see now the other idea that you could have for the second verse would be to put the melody in the left hand let's say uh, if you want to do a, um, a slow song uh, like amazing grace <laughs> something different. The first time through, you have the left hand accompanying the right hand. Don't stop. 
stay in it too long so that it doesn't become very tiring. The idea here that we're talking about is just a change of pace, constantly changing, going from one idea to another idea. Now, <clears throat> uh, modulating is a, is a good idea to change keys uh, to help you to get some, some variety and feel in this thing. Don't keep it in the same key all the way. Use modulations and change keys. Uh, maybe even going into the second verse, change keys so that, that you have a variety. Now let me show you what I'm talking about. change keys in that song, whereas in the other one I did change keys. 
with this one. Uh, I, I kept it in the, in the same key. Uh, I once had a teacher that told me, just keep keep them guessing, Charles. Keep them guessing what's going on. He he would just change tempos. He would even slow down right in the middle of the verse. He would just all of a sudden come to a stop, and your your ears just keep on going. Hey! Put on the brake, and you go man. You back it up. And you get with him, and you know. For example, he would he would do he would do something like. This. to a waltz time. One, two, three, one, two, you know. Uh, that's the way it goes. Here we go. It has a happy sound, doesn't it? I mean, it just makes you feel good. And that's what you want, is mm -hmm. to, to, to do tunes that makes people feel happy. The time is getting away. Uh, the last thing is an ending. Now, naturally, we're not going to exhaust every idea in the whole wide world here in this session, but uh, I'm giving you enough ideas that you can take home with you, apply these to another gospel song, and make it click and make it work for you. And, give, and this gives you something different than what people have heard you been playing and playing and playing. Now you've got some ideas that... Uh, that will open up uh, new arrangements. I hope that it'll, it'll be inspiring where you'll open up new arrangements for you. Now, the ending. Uh, on this song here, uh, Another tune in the same style, I didn't do that. Went back to the introduction idea and played it again. I played the intro in the beginning and then I played it in the interlude in the middle and then at the very end I came back and played it. Well, again, it, after you, you've worked out a number of arrangements, uh, you, you just want something different. So you deviate from the fact that the, uh, the middle thing is going to be different and the end is going to be different, and you just all of a sudden you trick them and you play the same thing again. <laughs> Especially if you get a hold of an idea. And I, when I heard this little idea, I loved it. It's a four chord, a four sharp diminished, a one, a six, and then a two, five, and then a one. A four, four sharp diminished. Uh, hanging right there. Um, 
know some of the, the, the big numbers, uh, then you could uh, borrow from your classical music, <clears throat> borrow an idea from your classical music, uh, such as... Um, Okay, so there you go. The second part of the piano solo arranging episode with Dr. Charles Novell. Man, um, I hope you got a lot out of that. I, I, I know that you did. So many ideas there that if you apply them, they will make a difference in your playing. Within our CNS teaching series, we have a couple books that I believe for you pianists could be great for you. My dad had done a book on piano improvisation, intros, turnarounds, licks, fill-ins, endings. Uh, and then we also just released this this past summer at CNS 22. We have a, a, an arrangement book, 10 of dad's arrangements typeset into music that will make great piano solos, offertories, or specials for you. So you can contact us at www.cnsmusic.com to order a copy of one of those books or even to get both of those. The books are $20 a piece. And I tell you what I'm going to do because I am in a really good mood after my piano lesson with my dad today. We will make a special. Books are 20 a piece. You want to get both of them? We'll do both for $30 if you mention this episode of the CNS podcast, the best day yet. So until next time, hope you got something from this. And once you realize that you did, it will truly make you understand that today has been the best day yet. Be blessed. Thanks for listening to the Charles Novell School of Music podcast, the best day yet. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter under the name the Charles Novell School of Music. And for more information on CNS and our upcoming events, like our online school, our weekend regional sessions, our creative coaching, and our pastor's retreat, you can visit us at our website at www.cnsmusic.com. As you've listened to this episode, we hope that you've gained some information that you can apply to your music and to your ministry to make today the best day yet.